1065 is on the road here at Google Cloud Next 2025 in my home amongst homes, Las Vegas, Nevada, doing that tech thing. Been a great show so far. I mean, a lot of talk about agents, of course, in the context of generative AI, but a lot of talk about what really makes the world go around. Is that software? Is that infrastructure? And yeah. the last two years has been infrastructure almost leading the way. These things are all so interdependent, Pat. I mean, this build out of infrastructure is all about workloads. It's all about what can be consumed, what can drive productivity, what can drive efficiency gains. And of course, we're seeing this era where it's sort of ushered in. We, we saw a very fast migration. It was, it was machine learning and analytics, and we were finally getting adapted to that. And then generative tools started coming out. And now we, our sentences are being completed and our marketing is being written. And now we have agents coming together. And I think agents is really kind of bringing together the promise of automation, of intelligent process tools, of workflows, of generative, and of course, analytics all meeting and a heck of a lot of infrastructure is going to be required for that. So let's dive in and talk about Google Cloud Infrastructure. Mark, welcome back to the show. Thank you, it's great to be here. Yeah, we were so pleased last year. Uh, we talked a lot about accelerators. We talked about CPU, CPU, GPU, all infrastructure. It was great. I think we all agreed that uh, even though we always liked infrastructure, uh, infrastructure is cooler than ever. Absolutely. <laughs> it was DPUs and XPUs and TPUs and there's going to be a CP2 RPU, whatever. I'm joking. Every I'm joking. I'm joking. I might make up my own chip someday. Eh, why not? I'll just call you Chip from now on. Yep. So, so Mark, you heard you heard our sort of you know entree into this conversation. Um, a lot going on. You're focused on the infrastructure side of it, but it's all about being able to enable these other things that you're doing, whether it's air gapping Gemini or it's the workloads that are going to enable agents to be successful. Talk a little bit about how you're kind of thinking about the infrastructure design to support. Uh, the growing diversity of workloads around AI. Sure, absolutely. So you started with all these great examples of applications, right? And, I'm here for you. And uh, you know, as a, <laughs> thank you. Uh, and as an infrastructure person, you know, um, we like to think about this. Our strategy as being a workload optimized infrastructure is what we're delivering. And the core idea there is we look at each and every workload or each and every application, and then we design at a systems level across compute, storage, network, hardware, software to meet the unique needs of each and every workload. And I think the thing that's fascinating right now is if you look at this next generation of AI workloads, mixture of experts, agents, agents working together, it's placing unprecedented demand on the infrastructure. And so we've been working hard to make sure that we've got the right capabilities to meet those next set of applications. Right. So Mark, um, I'm trying to always try to put myself in the seat of the customer. Mm. And with all of these different workloads, with all of the different applications that sit on top of them, how do they know what infrastructure to use. Um, I mean, okay, you have compute, but you have different storage, you have different networking that all do things a little bit differently. It's, it's one thing a sophisticated customer can probably figure it out, uh, but not everybody can. And even if you're a sophisticated customer, how do I accelerate that, that learning? Absolutely, so uh, I think looking at it from the customer back is absolutely the right way to do it and uh, the way we like to design our products. And uh, you know, in, in simple terms, if you're an enterprise customer that's looking to maybe AI superpower an existing application or build a new app, you're probably going to want to do that through an API to a model as opposed to lower level access to the infrastructure. And for that, we have our Vertex AI platform, right? Yes. So it makes it super easy. You've got the model garden. You have access to all the latest and greatest Google models, but you also have third party and open source models. And you can easily integrate those with your application. You can tune them, you can ground them and you know, days to go from an idea to actually something working, which is pr pretty amazing. Um, but as you mentioned, there's also another class of customers that's maybe more um, technically sophisticated. Right. Companies like an Anthropic, for example, or a HubX, um, that are basically you know, building, uh, some of them are training their own models or tuning existing models. Other of them are taking existing models and serving them at large scale. And those types of customers typically want to access the infrastructure to lower level through something like Google Kubernetes Engine, for example. Yes. Um, and then underneath that, of course, is the actual hardware, right? The GPUs, the TPUs, the CPUs. And from that perspective, I think one thing that sets Google apart is we have leading capabilities, you know, leading choice of accelerator platforms, both for TPUs and for GPUs and CPUs. And we can maybe go a little bit deeper into that in a, in a sec. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah, it'd be a really interesting um, conversation. I know many people want to have is they want to zero in a bit on 
you know, why choosing a mm. certain, you know, Pat and I, we're, we're silicon geeks. We love semiconductors. And of course, we've seen how important they are to changing the world and everything. But, you know, if you maybe, you know, indulge us a little bit. We know you love all your children, meaning you love your merchant relationships. You love the silicon you're building. But really, like, what is the like kind of ethos as it pertains to Google about how you, you and your team and your sales are thinking about supplying the customer with the right silicon, giving them the flexibility they need to basically meet the, the demands, the growth, the expansion, all the things. Because it's not just about the workload now, Mark. It's right. about where the workload is going to go and what the expectation is. And we all know how fast that's changing. Yeah, yeah, great, great question. So I think, um, I think one of the things that makes Google unique here is that we operate at every level of that value chain, right? We're doing the research in Google DeepMind, we're building the models, we're serving those models in production in our consumer apps, and then we're uh, enabling the infrastructure that, that supports all of that. Um, and so we're learning a lot from that whole process, as well as from how we work with our external customers. And as part of that, we kind of get to see a glimpse of what the future is looking like, right? Sure. Or might look like, and then design that into the underlying infrastructure platforms. And I think um, the Ironwood uh, seventh generation TPU platform that we launched uh, here today is a fantastic example of that. Um, we talk about that as a, you know, AI acceleration platform for the age of inference. Right. Well, what does that mean? If you want to do fantastic inference, you need a lot of memory, you have to have the chips working together in unison to be able to serve these complex multimodal models with multiple agents communicating with each other all on the same platform. And so we looked at those trends at the application level, and then we built the underlying capabilities into the TPU platform to support them. Yeah, it really is a platform game for sure. I think, you know, I, I mean, just, just to be factual, you were the first ones to put together a, an AI platform. You surprised me uh, last year when, or your research team uh, said, no, we train Gemini and TPUs mm -hmm. and the world went, Yep. Nuts, because wait, you know, how did, <laughs> how is this done? How is this possible? Uh, and I think you you reset, uh, well, first of all, you got a lot of credit for, for what you could do. Um, and this isn't your first rodeo. I mean, seventh generation right. uh, on the TPU side, uh, I guess eight if you put, you know, 0.5 if that counts, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. But pretty impressive. And uh, a complete platformization really is encompassed in your AI hypercomputer. Right. Now, by the way, the first time when I hear it, <laughs> I mean, I've done product management, I've done product marketing, I'm thinking, hmm, product marketing, great, great you know, great uh, uh, name there, but it's it's a lot more than a name. Mm -hmm. What is it? What does it symbolize? Does it symbolize the platformization? Does it symbolize uh, the long-term commitment you're making, or or, or something different? So I think the, the core idea here is that it's really this integrated system that we're delivering to meet the unique needs of all of those different types of AI workloads and all of the, those different use cases from training to tuning to serving. And uh, we've designed and actually delivered this across compute, working together with storage, working together with the network at the hardware layer. And then on top of that, op optimized software. So for example, optimized support for PyTorch and JAX and things like yeah. DLLM on top of that underlying hardware. And even one step further, making it easy for customers to consume it commercially with things like um, dynamic workload scheduler that allow you to say, hey, I need a certain amount of accelerators for a certain period of time, you know, two weeks from now. Right. Guarantee they're going to be there when you need them and then only pay for them when you're actually using them. So it's really this systems level design across hardware, software, and consumption models that's at the, the heart of the AI hypercomputer. Now I appreciate that. So. I want to go back a second to talking about uh, V7 Ironwood. You mentioned inference, and, and you know it was kind of a, as you were talking about it, it just kind of dawned on me. We know that inference is going to be this sort of parabolic growth, right? If you just look at agents, for instance, right, we're still in this kind of very new era, new dawn of this, where you have a companies deploying a few agents. We haven't gotten to the point yet where you have thousands and now millions, and eventually probably billions and trillions of these things working. So inference becomes the killer workload. But obviously you have to think about that because there is a lot of training, there's test time, there's you know all the different ways that you're going to basically tune models. How are you think like as you talk about the platform, you talk about this being inference centric, are you going to still focus on training? You know, Pat mentioned the training of Gemini. Um, are you guys sort of looking and saying maybe we want to double down on where we see the market going and not be so, like, is there any sort of thinking to that or is that just where you landed on Ironwood? So it's, it's definitely for both, right? And so 
uh, training is a, a significant investment for Google. It's also a significant um, investment for many of our customers. Um, we expect that to continue to grow and we're continuing to invest in that. Um, for example, we recently enabled a software capability called Cluster Director that allows you to treat a large number of individual accelerators in a cluster as a single logical entity. So deploy them, manage them, predict failures before they might occur and actually correct them before it causes an issue with your training job, ultimately shrinking the time to do a training of a large model down significantly. So we're continuing to invest full steam ahead in training. Now that being said, to your point exactly, you know, 2025 is the year of inference, right? We're already seeing it going through the roof from a Google perspective. We're seeing huge interest from our customers. And so that's the next big area of focus, but we're gonna definitely, definitely do both. No, I think that's great. I, I think it's just one of those particular areas where we know that there's a lot of companies trying to inference. And then you're even seeing kind of layering down to like, we're only trying to do video or we're building chips that are only for edge or we're building chips that are only for. So there is still kind of a lot of, you know, processing kind of what platform, what architecture, what's going to kind of lead. And by the way, I think Pat, you and I both say this frequently, but this kind of zero sum mentality that tends to exist. I, I like that Google has sort of the we love our merchants. We love to build and make sure we create what's custom for us. Because I think in the end, the market's so big, whether you have the half trillion dollar number by the end of the decade or the trillion dollar number, it's like, do, it's we, really, do we really have to settle that there's only be one company or two? Co like, there can probably be 10 or 15. And by the way, what we know from the CPU era, that it's probably best for the market to have some, some choice. Um, and I think that's something that we've hopefully gone back and we learned from what's happened in the past to make sure that we stay on the, on the cutting edge of innovation. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think you know a lot of that um, uh, initial value we think we can deliver is actually in the software on top of the hardware, yeah, yes, right? And sure. so if you think about customers wanting choice and flexibility, yeah, they want to be able to use maybe sometimes GPUs, other times TPUs, other times CPUs, but they would like to have them all operate in a consistent way. They'd like to have the models be able to easily move across those different underlying hardware platforms without having to re-optimize everything. And so, we're investing a lot in the software layer on top that makes that possible. And I'll give you one specific example of that that's super uh, exciting to a lot of customers for inference. So um, there is a inference engine, uh, open source inference engine called VLLM. Yep. Yes. And uh, it's getting like huge traction in the market. Uh, it's got its start um, with PyTorch on top of GPUs and that's fantastically supported there. But then uh, today we announced that we're also extending support for VLLM with PyTorch that's on right. TPUs. Yep. Right? And so now it makes it super easy for a customer to run the model across either of those two platforms as they, as they choose. Well, in the end, enterprises want choice. They want optionality. And while in the beginning of a cycle, there might be a, you know, a rabbit or something that gets out, but, mm. but in the end, they want choice. And, and it just gives it the ability to sleep well at night yeah. and understand that, that uh, they're not connected to just one method just one vendor. Uh, and I'm really happy to hear uh, about the VLLM support. Yeah, we, we're definitely hearing a lot about that, Mark, and we're hearing a lot about sort of the abstractions moving higher up and VLLM sort of opening up the gambit to different, you know, different frameworks being able to be utilized to basically write software to different hardware architectures. And I think that's where you really start to get the scale with AI and the scale with, you know, the future of AI's potential. Because you all know, while we're loving this CapEx moment, we're loving this build out, um, I think the world really wants to know when we start to see it consume, we start to see it grow, we start to see it change industries and really drive the next wave of productivity. Well, Mark, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on the 6.5. It's been great to chat to you at Google Cloud. We, we seem to do this on an annual cadence. So if we don't do it before, let's be sure to do it again next year. Absolutely, I always enjoy the discussion. I look forward to it. And thank, thank you, you everybody for being part of the 6.5. We are on the road here at Google Cloud Next 2025 in Pat's second home, Las Vegas, <laughs> Nevada. Hit subscribe, be part of our community. We appreciate you tuning in. Check all our coverage out here at Google Cloud Next. And of course, join Pat and I each and every week for our 6.5 where I win all the debates. <laughs> Talk soon. Bye-bye.